I'm Polly Puller. I'm a wildlife writer and photographer. I also take in injured wildlife. I've been doing that since I was a youth. I always wanted to be a vet, but unfortunately my brain wasn't uh, developed in that way. I'm quite used to getting funny telephone calls about various injured wildlife, and I got a call to say there was a squirrel dray had been found on the ground in a garden in Pitlochry. The person had been very responsible and left the dray there for an hour to see if the mother came back to remove the babies inside, but she didn't. So the dray was picked up and brought to me, and I nearly had a fit when I saw the contents, because these little tiny red squirrels were probably only two, three, four days old. They were completely blind and naked and completely helpless. So I started feeding them tiny amounts of milk, well watered down to begin with, with some glucose in it. And I was amazed that they actually were very, very keen to feed. It was a bit of a fine art, just getting the right speed, because they're very greedy, these little babies, and they're desperate for feeds. So the little paws were going um, as if they were feeding from their mother. And it was very, very important not to drown them, obviously, with them drinking too quickly and choking. get up at two or three in the morning. And I was thinking always that, you know, I had the whole future in the palm of my hand. And I kept relating this to the fact that as human beings, we have the future of all our wildlife in the palm of our hand. And if we don't look after things, it's too late. So I had got myself very involved in it. All I could think about was this end goal of releasing them in the garden and at home. What was incredible was watching their growth rates. They, they started off with these feet, which were miles too big for their little bodies, and I could see their wonderful double-jointed ankles. Their eyes opened at about a month old, and then things really began to progress very fast. They were very, very active in their little nests, moving around and squeaking. Sometimes they'd get too hot on their hot water bottle and come out of their little woolly hats. I use um, sort of little woolly bonnets because they can crawl into them, but they can equally crawl out of them and they curled up together. I would open the little nest and find a, a complete knot of squirrels. In fact, the collective noun for squirrels should be a knot because they were all entwined with each other and you really couldn't see whose feet and whose tails were belonged to who. It's a very fulfilling process. We'd move them from the basket with the hot water bottles. We'd move them into a nice box and we'd put some sort of uh, branches and some logs for them to play on. And then the fun really began. And I spent hours watching their antics. The great thing with these little squirrels is they will play frenetically, madly for a short time, and then they just fall asleep and you can't do anything with them. They just want to go back to bed. There comes a natural progression, a time when it's really clear that these little animals need to be in a bigger place, they need to be outside. And also I was very aware they were getting overhumanized. I needed to stand back from them and they needed to see less humans and go wild. They had to be wild. I, I didn't want them climbing all over people. That, that was just no use whatsoever. So outside they must go. We got an aviary all ready for them. It took a few days for them to stop sort of seeing me and greeting me like a long lost soul. So I had to only go in and feed them when they were asleep, go and put the food out then, and that way I could minimize contact even more. So the release day dawned, and I have to say my heart was in my mouth. So excited that we'd actually reached this goal together. These little squirrels were ready to go, and they all seemed very fit. So opened the Avery door and waited. It took them some time to come out. Interestingly, it was the little female. She was the first to come out. She'd always been quite precocious in doing things. And she came out and was sitting on top of the aviary, investigating a little dish of food we'd put out. Then the second female came out. You could almost sense that they realized they weren't in a cage anymore. And then lastly, the male came out. And then they all went up this aspen tree that I'd planted 18 years ago, which is now very big and they did the most fabulous acrobatics and I almost wept watching them. I thought this was what it had all been about, to see them free like that. Being a substitute for an animal's mother is one of the hardest things. You're never going to be even half as good. You can try and emulate all the things that a wild mother would do, but you're never going to really truly 
give that creature the best start in life. So that was a big concern to me. Squirrels are a, an animal that people just adore. They're a mammal that is so popular. And these squirrels really are an example of the need to protect our natural environment. We lose habitat on a gut-wrenching scale every single day. But these little squirrels, for me, really made me see how important it is for us to plant trees, to plant hedgerows, to leave areas wild. This is something we're so bad at, and we've got to address this now more than ever. And for me, the squirrels just highlighted that every moment that I had them.